Olá, bem-vindo a mais uma edição de Novidade TV, com nós de novo, me Tony da Moura. Na Novidade TV, esta manhã, só de nossa costa, traz nós informação que está feita à comunidade ali e na toda parte do mundo. Hoje, nós temos um convidado, é que está feito crioulo, mas é filho cabo-verdiano, é que está feito em inglês, não tem protocolo nem em inglês sobre um programa que já tem muito tempo de trabalho, que não está a chamar aquelas informações, é bom para todos os membros da nossa comunidade. E tudo quem tem filho tem informação ali que está hoje, que está feita show no sistema legal ali no estado de Rhode Island. Já tem show tempo na, na Rhode Island para trabalhar. Hoje não tem protocolo sobre um programa de pai. Uh, first of all, uh, I explain that your Creole is somewhat questionable, so we're going to talk about it in English. And the information is good for, for, him, for everyone. Today we bring Wayne Barbosa to the show. Welcome to Nobody Thank you very much. Um, let's start off. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, Wayne Barbosa. Okay, Wayne Barbosa is a father of 13 children. Um, I have seven sons and six daughters, and uh, for the most part of 18 years as a single parent, uh, I guess I got a lot of experience as a, as a dad. And um, I recently did a program here in Rhode Island as a consultant for a, a local agency uh, that was working with the child support enforcement, uh, where they're looking for non-custodial parents to pay child support, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the deadbeat dads, so-called deadbeat dads. And I was contracted to come up with a program uh, that could get money out of these guys and get these guys to pay attention to their children uh, before they get locked up, you know, for not cooperating. Let's go back a little bit. When you say um, deadbeat dad, okay. do we have deadbeat moms? Oh, definitely. In fact, the ratio is almost 50-50. Really? Yes. Uh, it's getting up there. It's pretty close right now. For, for the people that uh, that's watching this program, uh, the program is Rhode Island's First Father. Fatherhood. Uh, what's the initiative of that program? Well, what started it basically was um, after raising my children, my youngest one turned 19 in January of uh, last year, um, and I, I was going to retire, mm -hmm. but I had all this experience, there was a lot of uh, uh, community activities that I could get involved with and help out, so I joined a group called AARP, which is like seniors helping, you know, organizations with their experience over the years. Um, they sent me on to an agency that was looking for a, uh, a father that would be a good role model for these deadbeat dads. I wanted to give these guys a chance mm -hmm. before they lock them up, you know, because they weren't finding jobs or they found jobs but it wasn't making the payments or their job wasn't paying enough for them to survive on. So uh, the court would send me these guys and and I would run them through a three-week course. Twelve out of fourteen would graduate, and, and uh, this happened for a couple of uh, periods. And each time, um, I got different research, different data, different stat uh, statistics, and I found there was good reasons, many, many good reasons, why these dads weren't involved with their children's lives. And, of course, now, for a lot of fathers, I, you know, I'm very critical when it comes to people who are not responsible for whatever they produce their offspring. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the factors behind some of these reasoning behind why these young men weren't taking care of their children? Well, a lot of it is domestic. Uh, you know, they, they fall in and out of love. They, they produce a child and uh, they're no longer with the woman. So uh, there's, there's a conflict there. Uh, there might be some jealousy involved. There might be uh, a, a second boyfriend, a new boyfriend on the scene. So then you have domestic violence. Uh, you know, the police come in. There, there's some kind of uh, criminal activity that would take place between the, the two sides. And naturally, the father would be the one to catch the load because they expect the father to walk away and like he, you know, never was the father. Now, the father will get bitter. And that seems to be one of the major reasons why these fathers do not, you know, contribute. For educational purpose, a lot of fathers, for example, I see, I hear them saying, I can't do this, for, for example, because uh, I can't get along with the mom, so therefore I won't pay child support. Mm -hmm. You know, legally, what are, what's the legal status behind paying child support? Well, the legal status, uh, according to um, the law states this, it's actually out of the Social Security Act. Um, the Workforce Act, um, Chapter 44, uh, 666. 
It pertains to deadbeat dads and the collection of their uh, child support. Uh, because they fall in that category, a lot of them, uh, when they fall behind through employment, the lack of employment, lack of income, uh, plain uh, unskilled, they just can't get the payments up, or they might have addictions, they might have uh, mental disabilities, they might have habits, uh, just their lifestyles in itself, plus the burden of losing a family. You've got to realize uh, these dads, uh, they come from all walks of life. Some of them are very good, hard-working men. But because of the experience of losing their child, uh, uh, any, even a woman can sense what that must feel like to one minute you're a dad and next minute you lose your child. Uh, they, they can't really cope with that. And they have different ways of responding. And of course, they don't know the law. You know, uh, ignorance of the law is no excuse. But if they don't know the law, they usually break it. You know? How do you rehabilitate someone in a few